This is the ROG Ally and it's dead. That's because I've just gotten done running three different types of battery tests in its different modes to figure out how to get the most battery out of this. And that's what you're here for. How long does this thing last and why is that power cord in the box 65 watts and six and a half feet long? It might be because you're gonna need it. So stick around to find out why. So, this is basically how the battery system works for the ROG Ally. Right now, I have it plugged in, and this is mainly how you're going to be playing AAA titles, unless for an hour or two here or there. This is not a stripped-down handheld for mobile gaming. This is a gaming laptop in the form of a handheld, and I think they've done a fantastic job. All right, so with this device being a gaming laptop in the shape of a handheld versus a portable first handheld, we got to go through the settings. So when you plug it in, it immediately defaults to 30 watts and turbo mode. This makes your games run very smooth and you don't really have any problem. Now the Hertz, it keeps your Hertz rating at the same no matter what you do. So being able to put it to 30 watts and put up to 120 hertz makes your games nice and smooth so 1080p on high settings at 120 hertz on this device with diablo 4 is totally playable this does however make quite a lot of fan noise now if we go through and we change just our wattage to 10 watts we can immediately see what happens to the gameplay it is very choppy but if we're actually trying to game at this level, how do we feasibly do so to gain extra battery life? So this is when you need to know what type of wattage you want to pull out of the device and then decide what type of game you can play for the desired amount of time that you're trying to get out of the device. So gaming at 10 watts versus 30 watts is going to yield you very different time results. So this is almost playable, but 10 watts for this type of game is not gonna do it. So you can't really play AAA titles at 10 watts, but having all these different modes means there will be better games to play at different wattages based on how much battery life you'd like to have. So the game we're playing now, Dorf Romantic, is a fantastic little puzzle game that runs at 10 watts. And if we take the screen to around 50% and the refresh rate to 60 hertz we can actually get a good amount of battery out of this device at 10 watts and depending on what other software is running you could probably get around three to four hours with this type of setup that's also going to depend on your screen brightness and if you have any led lights or you're drawing any other power any other way the idea if, if you're trying to get the longest amount of battery out of this device would be to turn everything non-essential off. That includes stuff like rumble, the joystick lights, and anything else you don't want playing. Let's move it up to 15 watts, 60 hertz, at 1080p low, and see what we can get out of this. This is the method I like for Diablo 4 because it gets you around two hours of gameplay, which is plenty to get some missions done. So Diablo and those types of top-down games will run great at around 15 watts, 60 hertz. And that'll give you around two hours depending on your screen brightness. Now running Destiny at 15 watts is possible. And with most new AAA games, they know you're going to be playing on a laptop or all of these new devices coming out that are using a single chip to get everything done. So a lot of people are putting in different types of lower-end speed options so like cyberpunk has a steam deck option in its menu system destiny has been out since the playstation 3 so it has a bunch of different options for resolutions and scalings and texture packs so we can actually run this at 15 watts but if you're looking for a great local play session at 120 you could definitely get it for at least an hour so at 15 watts you're definitely going to get playable at low graphics quality but if you pop it up to 30 watts and take the screen resolution up to 120 hertz, it is just a whole different story. The device is super, super responsive, and your screen is just fantastic. Right in the drink. So the best thing to do with this device and all of the new handhelds that are coming out is to 
know what type of game and how much wattage you're going to be needing. And the fast charge capabilities are absolutely stunning on this device. And it's taking me about a half an hour to charge the device to about 50% and around an hour to charge the device back to holes. So this device does have power delivery and it having that makes the charge times really fast. So you can pop it on the charger for 20 minutes, get some percentage to keep playing, or with 65 watts, you can charge and play in around two hours. You can keep playing at 30 watts while charging at around a trickle speed of like two hours. So this device is closer to your gaming laptop than uh, anything else is. This is what you'd use as a gaming laptop and the battery you'd expect from a gaming laptop as well with a screen like this. So after running a full gamut of tests on this thing, it really depends on what mode and how much wattage you're actually pulling. In addition to how much your screen resolution is jacked up, 30 hertz versus 60 and 120 hertz is definitely gonna take up different types of power draws. But this being Windows and having some built-in power options already, in addition to what Asus has done with their overlay, really helps. So if you're looking to game for an hour on a AAA title, you can rip through that battery really quickly. If you know you're only gonna be playing for an hour and then able to charge it. But if you'd like to be on a flight for four hours and you really need to just sip that power and play a really light game, you can also do that. This having such fast PD charging is also really one of the big selling points of this device. Even just after 20 to 30 minutes of charging, you have a lot of battery back, which is why they give you that large 65 watt charger in the box. Because if you're just gaming and you're sitting on your couch and you're next to an outlet, you'd probably just gonna plug this in anyway. So this may not be the most power sipping device that we've ever tested on the channel here, but it's definitely a good handheld and a step in the right direction for gaming laptops in the shape of handhelds, which I would consider this basically that. So instead of comparing it to something like the Nintendo Switch, which isn't a gaming handheld that is supposed to be a laptop, it's more or less just a gaming handheld and is meant for consumption. That's that's what you're getting here. So take it for what it is. And if you're not sure that this is the device for you, well, check out one of these other videos because if it's the Steam Deck, maybe an iPad or even the Switch, I can make that decision for you or maybe for me and tell you to do it. Either way, I like this thing, but it uh, can absolutely rip through some batteries. So that's all I got for you guys right now. Send me some pickles, bye.